Don't worry, your really old CPU can get faster. Deep fakes are gonna cost us millions, if not billions of dollars, and the most unholy combination of GPUs ever has just happened. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hot tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this February 6th. 2024, which happens to be a Tuesday, and it happens to be a confusing launch for the next round of CPUs from AMD. We're looking at the Zen 5 motherboards that are supposed to be coming out sometime later this year, and now we're getting reports about it, including the fact that it will have guaranteed USB 4 40 gigabit per second support, which is great. However, the thing that is slightly confusing to me is that the naming scheme is going to change. It's going to go from X670E all the way up to X870E, with them skipping the 7 series completely. The numbers are gonna change, but the specs on this motherboard are supposed to get better. AMD doesn't include the 40 gigabit per second USB 4 guaranteed on every motherboard right now. You do have to get some very expensive ones to find any sort of option in that vein. So it's good to hear that it's gonna be coming as standard to the X870E. And what should be standard for you if you're looking to upgrade your PC is checking out Jawa because it's the marketplace for gamers by gamers where you can buy, build and sell. And so if you're looking to upgrade and you wanna offload your old GPU, Jawa will buy it from you directly. You just enter in the specs of your GPU and they'll pay you for that so that you can use it for your next PC upgrade. Or you can check out some of the other parts that people are looking to get rid of and snag an amazing deal for yourself. Whether that's getting an affordable, slightly older GPU for yourself, maybe picking up a new CPU, new motherboard, or any other number of peripherals, you can check out Jawa for that. Or you can even buy full PCs from them if you want because they have verified sellers who construct the PCs according to your specifications and will make it happen the way you do desire. So you can check out Jawa if you're looking to offload, if you're looking to intake to your new PC, and you can use our code UFD10 to save $10 off your first purchase with them. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Check it out at the link in the video description. But in case you're picking up an older CPU from Jawa all the way down to Sandy Bridge, there's a new mod that's out that can actually make it so you can get way faster performance. And it works by enabling resizable bar, which is a feature that's typically only found on more modern CPUs. The project's called Rebar UEFI, and it enables this resizable bar setup on CPUs as far back as I mentioned Sandy Bridge, which the testing that they did was on an i5-3470 with an RX 580, and that led to roughly 12% more gaming performance just by turning resizable bar on. There's a lot of requirements for this, a lot of tweaking that has to go into it, but you could potentially get this to work for yourself. However, as is with anything made by the community, don't trust it blindly, check it out, make sure that it's actually going to suit your needs and isn't going to install any malware on your system. But free performance for uh, just some tweaking is something that I think a lot of people want. So check it out at the link in the video description while Reese checks you out and your wallet and tries to hawk some deals to you. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and, you know, deals. Starting off today, we have everyone's favorite budget audio brand with the Fifine Gaming and Streaming XLR Audio Mixer, which essentially functions as a Go XLR for only $39.99, making it $18 off. But then next, we have this Fantex Eclipse P400A Mid-Tower ATX case for only $49.99 after rebate, making it $40 off the total price. And then lastly, we have this AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which you can pick up for only $386 with the included promo code, making it $63 off. And hey, we could be twinning. It would be cool. I'd like that. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, a bad deal has been foisted upon humanity, specifically when it comes to AI and deepfakes. And what we're hearing about is the first AI scam of its kind, where an employee accidentally transferred $25 million to different accounts that were not for his company. And the way it worked was that he was invited to a meeting with the company's CFO as well as other people from the company to discuss various financial transactions. And they were invited to a video conference that had many participants. And it's being reported that because the people in the video conference look like the real individual's concerns, such as the CFO, the worker made 15 transactions as instructed to five local bank accounts, which came to a total of 200 million Hong Kong dollars, which is roughly 25 million US. And it turns out that everyone the worker saw was fake. And it wasn't just fake, 
fake video, there were also fake voices being implemented as well, where they downloaded video footage off of the internet of the CFO and the other people in the meeting, and then used that to create a deep fake Zoom meeting that convinced somebody that everything was real. This likely will be the first of many that's gonna happen in this vein. It's getting easier and easier to clone people digitally to make it so that you can be convinced and fooled that somebody that you know and trust is asking you to do something that they typically wouldn't ask you to do, but because you believe in them, you're gonna go ahead and do it. This just gets back to the biggest, easiest way to ever hack a system, social engineering. You are the easiest person to fool in any given system, including me, and it's just something to be wary of, something to watch out for as time's marching forward. I don't wanna report on all of these instances as they happen, but they will likely continue to happen qu more quickly, more ferociously, and probably in greater amounts. Uh, so just get your systems in place to make sure that one employee can't transfer $25 million. That, that would have helped things a little bit if they didn't have the authority to do it. And Tesla doesn't wanna give Rivian the authority to sell all their new vehicles that they're coming out with, but Rivian says, ah, we're gonna do it anyways with Rivian announcing that they're gonna have their R2 vehicle announced on March 7th. This is supposed to be the more efficient, smaller model of their R1 vehicles, which tend to be very expensive and trying to subsidize the rest of their business. They're going with the Tesla model of starting with the expensive, moving on down to something a little bit more affordable, expected to be between 40 and $60,000, and look closer to just a normal SUV, but still be fully electric. This announcement's gonna be the first stage in the second tier of everything that Rivian has planned moving forward. But some of the past plans of Tesla are catching up to them because it used to be that Tesla offered free unlimited supercharging to some of the first owners of their vehicles. Additionally, one of the things that bothers older owners of Tesla vehicles, especially ones that bought full self-driving way back when before it cost even $3,000, is that they don't want to get a new vehicle because then they have to repurchase full self-driving, at least to unlock the software all over again, despite the fact that Tesla has actually not delivered on its promises for it. And so, one of the things that Elon has said he would never do is allow that to happen, but turns out for the second time ever, they are making it so that if you have the free unlimited supercharging and you have purchased a vehicle with full self-driving, if you upgrade to one of their new vehicles before the end of Q1, you will get both of those transferred to your new vehicle, potentially indicating that Tesla sees some slumping sales. They see that these older vehicles being out on the market could be prime customers, but because they're not actually treating well their old customers who believed in them at the beginning, they aren't gonna upgrade at all and this could be a way to make some people switch. And NVIDIA wants to switch your gaming setup because it's being found that in the latest drivers they release, they have a new tool called RTX True HDR, which can take any SDR game and then convert it to HDR. And it's being found that if you enable it via a mod, you can get it working right now as long as you have the driver installed. It replaces Windows built-in auto HDR and makes it so that your RTX graphics card is doing all of the heavy lifting in DX9, 10, 11, in 12 games, as well as OpenGL and Vulkan, but from just brief testing that other people have done, it does look like the HDR looks okay, serviceable. There are gonna be artifacts and glitches here and there with how the lighting works. It's not going to be perfect as if HDR was baked in from the very beginning, but this is something that NVIDIA is giving for free to their RTX card owners. You can get it working right now if you follow the instructions that are in the link in the video description, or you could potentially wait for it to get fully enabled by NVIDIA moving forward. But one of the things that NVIDIA probably would have never enabled is the ability for their graphics cards to fuse with one of these bad boys. The ARC A770 getting combined with a Titan XP in a test of just strange combination. It was found that in the scientific application of Fluid X3D that combining the A770 with the Titan XP by rendering the top half with one GPU and the bottom half with another GPU, they got 70% faster render times by using both graphics cards, which allowed them to both simulate the com computation faster as well as render it out in a faster time frame. And this is something that we could have had had multi-GPU support stayed with Vulkan and DX12. This again, is something that is technically possible on most modern titles that are being released. However, the problem is that it takes a lot to develop for it and the amount of people who are buying two GPUs and are going to implement it is so few that it's not really worth the game developer's time to make it happen. But it's just always amazing to see small stories like this when if you put in the development effort yourself,
yourself, you can get it running really nicely and create some abominations of a blue and green GPU combo, which I love to see. Let me know what your favorite memory of an SLI combo GPU setup was down below in the comments. I'm keen to hear from you about that, which let's go ahead and read the comments that we got from yesterday's episode. We got Gonarmy Leggies clarifying, because I mentioned in yesterday's episode about the A1 3D printer from Bamboo Labs that one of the first things they did was contact YouTubers and then it was pulled from store sit shelves. Turns out that in the interim, they actually did contact customers with them sending out an email to A1 buyers about the recall. They're offering a return slash refund plus 80 bucks. Or if you opt to keep it, you can get a new hotbed and $120 credit. They also have a file to print a cable protector if someone has one with an undamaged cable, but they still recommend not using it until you replace the heater cable. Honestly, this is an A plus response. So that's good to hear. I'm glad that Bamboo Labs is treating it seriously and getting it taken care of for their customers. Dr. Frogertston saying, honestly, the Vision Pro is incredibly impressive and super promising, but it's just way too expensive for most people, which is perfectly fair. It's the most valid criticism of the Apple Vision Pro. The $3,500 definitely puts it in a price segment where it is not an impulse purchase for hardly anyone. And instead what you're getting are the people who either have so much disposable income that it's not gonna bother them to spend that much money or the people who desperately want to be on the bleeding edge of tech and see how things are moving and operating. And so I get it. Jojo DePoe says, yeah, I feel like it would have been more competitive if it was $1,500 or even less. Obviously that would basically be impossible because of how much it does cost to make it, but still it's somewhat disappointing that it costs $3,500. I get it, but it's also this weird thing that's happening on the internet where people are lambasting it for costing so much and then also poo-pooing that it exists at all, saying that it doesn't do anything different than the MetaQuest or any other VR headset that's out there. And I think both takes are a little weird. Saying it should be more competitive doesn't really hold a lot of weight, especially because we don't know how many have sold. Like we have to get sales numbers from Apple about the Vision Pro in order to understand based on the amount of pre-orders that were being speculated by sites like Bloomberg and otherwise, it looks like they sold as much in revenue in in the first week as Meta did in the entire Q4 of 2023. So you can say it's not competitive, but based on the sales amount, it looks highly competitive to the point where their Apple's earning a whole lot of money. Now, obviously that doesn't project to the future. How well are those sales going to hold for 2024? It remains to be seen, but saying it's not competitive, I, I think like it's not competitive for people who would never spend that much on Th those types of things, sure, but it is competitive for the people who want that type of experience, which it appears that there's hundreds of thousands of them. Then we got Floyd DeFisher saying, tell Rare Brew to bring out a version for Nespresso Virtuo Brewers and I'll gladly buy. That is not gonna happen for a while. We are very deep into the process of trying to run a coffee company and just even getting regular whole beans or ground coffee is a very thorough undertaking and to, to make things like specialty products like the, things that go in your Nespresso. That's not happening anytime soon. Neither are K-Cups, but things like that can be on the roadmap as we're moving forward. But just sticking with one blend of coffee with two options of whole bean or ground, and that's as simple as it we need it to be in order to make it successful. Then we got Noob like saying, I knew a few people that got VR headsets and it was always the same story. I used it a bunch the first month. Now it just sits there collecting dust. Hopefully the Vision Pro has more better apps to keep people engaged. And I do think that based on my time with it, there's an, at least the possibility of that being true simply because the Vision Pro has the Apple ecosystem, it has a million iPad apps, it has the Vision Pro ecosystem, which is starting to develop. But one of the main things is that any time I would play on a Rift or a Vive back in the day, most of the time it was just demos and games. And that doesn't do enough to keep me coming back to it. Because once I finish my game, I'm over it. And unless I want to play Beat Saber for hours and hours and hours on end, I'm not going to go back to those devices. Now, with the Quest 3 having more capability with pass through and working in your physical space, people are using that a little bit more. The Apple Vision Pro being a computer that you use in your physical reality makes it, I think it's going to have a little bit more staying power than the gimmicks that used to exist with VR, because this is a little bit different than just a 
VR headset. We got Dancing Dread saying, yes, bring on that burnt bean juice. I want a yummy, yummy roast master mug. I don't think that's gonna happen. This is this is the only mug that we have for right now. And we got Packly saying, frame generation is a boon to aging hardware. I'm glad that, that you feel that way. I'm not sure that everybody does. And then lastly, Jojo Depo saying, if they make it so you can have two people in the same room with a Vision Pro being able to essentially be in the same environment, seeing the same thing, that would be so cool. It's possible. It's a, I mean, that would just require software development on Apple side, which would, we're on day four software at this point, which based on how polished it actually is, I'm very impressed with how the Vision Pro works in certain regards, but there are little hiccups and features that I want to see coming in a future software update and having things like that would be very cool. Or even multi-monitor support when you're using a Mac in the Vision Pro would be great. I'm excited to see where Apple takes the Vision Pro. That's, that's essentially where I'm at right now. And I also find it way more usable in my daily life than I ever thought I was going to. And I'm not going to continue this episode of Hot news anymore. It's over. Goodbye.